Welcome to Off the Record. My name is Sean, and each week I bring alternative music into your living room. Today we have a tribute to gothic music, which is probably my favorite form of music. But first, we have an interview with Magna Pop. I had a chance to catch up with Shannon, who's the bass player with Magna Pop, and also David, who is the drummer with Magna Pop. And here's what they had to say about Gene Simmons and monkeys. all kinds of stuff too. All of our stuff, everybody listens to, I mean, we put stuff into the van. I, I love like cheesy jazz and um, like skate punk and hardcore and, and just pure like bubblegum pop like the Archies. And so everybody listens to like so many different things in the van. It can get really annoying or it can be a real eye opening kind of thing. It's like hit. Yeah, I was on that Rancid. Rancid? Yeah, now there's, there's, that's just what they are, Ransom. England's <laughs> newest hit makers, Ransom. No, they're not. They're very. people take that, that, that punk rock stuff. Like, uh, uh, Ryko just released the Mercyland CD. Mercyland was a popular band from uh, Athens in the late 80s. And nothing but straight punk rock stuff. And uh, the European people have just been blasting the, the record. Have they? Yeah, they've said they just trash it. Oh my god, it was recorded. The British, like the British press trashes it. No, the British press, yeah, they're real they trash every taste makers, right? The British press, I mean, I can rail on them hours and hours. I mean, bands like, you know, Suede were on the cover Suede. of like every magazine. What's that other country. logo? Pulp? I'm Pulp. sorry, I know. you're not Pulp, kidding. Oasis. <laughs> Those bands like pop up on the cover of like every magazine in the country before they've even played a show half the time. You know, they've done one demo of three songs and the press jumps on the bandwagon because they want a British band to do really well, especially over here. You know, because Sway came over, nobody cared. Paul came over, nobody cared. Yeah, Oasis so. is like doing, I think, doing pretty well here, though. What, Oasis? I'm not familiar with them. You know that song. Linda writes all words. Words. Comes up with like all the vocal melodies and all that stuff. Yeah, she just picks words out of the dictionary and sticks them together. But she's really good at it. <laughs> and uh, most of the time, like, Ricky starts off with guitar riffs, and then Linda puts, like, a cool melody on it, and then it morphs. It becomes a magnifop song. Or she likes, she presses them into the computer, and it, it whips out a little chord progression for her. She plays it, and Linda thinks of words, you know, pretty much all computerized. And then they, fa they fax it over to us, and we go, no, that's not right. I put it in my system. And, you know, yeah, they sent us floppy disks. And, and, uh, uh, oh, look. Hey. We weren't talking about you or anything. What's going on? Nothing. It's bad now that you... Are you being interviewed? Yeah, sort of. You can get right hey, in Linda. here. Hey, Linda. Uh, why don't you keep it over What's there? What's eight-year-old pussy taste like? You're asking the wrong person. Depends. <laughs> Where'd you come up with the name? Who came up with the name for the band? Yeah. I did. I did. We were, like, pretty associated with it. And it was just like, it just popped out. Like, hey, we were, no, we were, the word pop was being thrown around so much. Yeah, what were we were, we were, you know, we just called the word pop. I don't know, just one of those things, band names were almost impossible to think of a good one anymore anyway. So we needed to think of one that, that wouldn't get, that somebody else wouldn't come up and say, hey, we already got that name. Because that happened to us. You know that band Swell from San Francisco? We were called Swell, and they found out about it, and they had a cow, they were freaking out. And they called, they got, somehow got Linda's work number where she was waitressing, and they call and harass her. You know, like, you gotta change your name, and it's not cool, we've had the name longer than you. And they were, okay, they were, yeah, they were real crybabies about her, like, fine. And, and we were nobody. not that great. Yeah, we, no one knew who the hell we were, and they were all worried about it. So we said, yeah, we'll change it, fine. 
and we changed it. And then, you know, now they're swell and they can have it. You know, smack their monkey. Swell on you guys. <laughs> oh! Hey, oh, it's play a, with no it. No way. That and I'm putting it with my kiss cards. Yeah. Like, that's I'm putting it with my hey, whole collection. Not without taking pictures of it. Scan it in. Scan it in. From Gene Simmons to me. It's even got some blood on it. Wow. Oh, well, that was mine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is a letter from Gene saying he'd love to come to the show uh, December 9th in Los Angeles. Look, and there's Simmons, the famous Simmons autograph that I copied on notebooks forever when I was in 6th and 7th grade. Yeah, some kids had a hard time when they were young. Some of us like Kiss, whereas if I put Kiss on in the van, David really hates it. I don't know, it's actually, it's not as offensive as it was uh, 15 years ago. Is it not as offensive as Rancid? It's not, is it no, 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 I, no, no, I don't want to say it's not nearly as offensive as Rancid. Now, I can take Kiss uh, far more than Rancid, even though, you know, Rancid's good for like two songs, and then, then after that, wait a minute, as long as they quit playing the same song. <laughs> Nah, I guess, you know, they're, they're pretty bad, but they ain't that bad. They're much better years later. They, they, they age well. He's no good. <laughs> what does he play? Who? Steve Hunter. Guitar player. He played on, like, Lou Reed Live. Detroit Rock City, right Rock here in Miami. Oh, shit. There's a love gun action. <laughs> he was an Alice Cooper fan for years. Michael would do four songs, too. He kind of like pressed the record button and said go and kind of like cheerleading for us. He didn't really produce it. Well, so he did the last one. The last four songs on that record, the other ones we did in our friend's basement studio by ourselves on the pumpkin record. They sounded better. Yeah, they rocked her. <laughs> <laughs> Bob had the bass a little light on the hot box. It was it definitely the bass light. For the American release, uh, the record company had to go back and remaster it. A little more bass in the mix and work out better. Yeah. Still not enough low as far as I'm concerned. Not enough low end. I mean, it's all mid rangey kind. I mean, you can hear the bass kind, but it's still kind of mid range. You know, but I guess <laughs> somebody was telling us because Bob lost all his like, high, high end and everything in his ear, so he turns up all the high end when he's mixing. It makes it look like shh. Yeah, he's a little pat on the dead side. Right? <laughs> he, I think he knows it. He he's tries to compensate for it. Yeah. Years and years of Fusker and now Sugar pulling his ears out, I guess. Yeah, Bob and production and all that. Even though we hope he's not too deaf, but most likely going we'll to do the next record. Yeah, we're going to have to get, get on in the. We'll work on those bass things. Work on the bass. When's the next record expected? Um, hopefully, we're going to try and record it in February or March. March, Maybe March April. April. And then that means they can get it. Hopefully, they'll be able to get it out by the fall. Hopefully. Shannon and David from Magnapop, and also a cameo appearance by Linda Hopper, who's the singer. And also there was some live footage there as well. They were really good in concert, and I hope they play near or sitting near you, actually.